this is a, a absolutely ridiculous bill. You're trying to take people's health care rights away and and pass the liability off to basically nobody. No, so, Michael, first of all, the federal government has liability. And secondly, my goal here is to save lives. The federal government has liability and her goal here is to save lives. First of all, the federal government has liability if someone has a vaccine reaction that causes damage to them to where they can't work or they just flat out die. I want you to actually research that program that she's speaking of. I think you'll see that it's quite inept to handle what we're going through right now. And, and not allow people to make their own healthcare decisions. I understand. No, that's Facebook fakery, that last part. Um, and then there's this guy. Facebook fakery. I don't know where he came up with that. The fact is that uh, the law that we're talking about, the Healthcare Right of Conscience Act, was never intended to cover uh, a pandemic where we're trying to keep people alive. Man, he's so concerned about keeping us alive. I can tell by the way he, just his mannerisms. Uh, this is, you know, a, a, a law that was passed decades ago to uh, allow healthcare providers and people who work for healthcare providers uh, to, by virtue of their conscience, um, not provide services that, uh, you know, that they that they don't want to. The Healthcare Right of Conscience Act is being misinterpreted uh, and, uh, you know, and used in court cases to try to allow people who just don't want to get vaccinated misinterpreted that's what he said right i think i heard him say misinterpreted um let me read exactly what it says so that there's no misinterpretation it says section eight denial of aid or benefits it shall be unlawful for any public official i think he's a public official guardian agency institution or entity to deny any form of aid assistance or benefits or to condition the reception in any way of any form of aid, assistance or benefits, or in any other manner to coerce, disqualify, or discriminate against any person, otherwise entitled to such aid, assistance or benefits, because that person refuses to obtain, receive, accept, perform, assist, counsel, suggest, recommend, refer, or participate in any way, in any form of health care services contrary to his or her conscience. Hmm misinterpreted it's pretty clear i mean it's pretty clear governor i think you not, might want to read it over again you might want to read that over again it's pretty clear I, I don't think there's any misinterpretation there but again i don't know where he went to school at the intent, the legal branch, the third branch of government that settles these disputes. Why aren't we letting them do their job? Yeah, this Representative Goebel, whatever her name is, uh, if you watch this long enough, every time that there is a comment made, there, there's a lady that comes over and, and whispers in her ear. And, and basically, um, the Democrats, because she's a Democrat, I can say that, the Democrats don't have a lot of confidence in her to speak freely. She apparently is uneducated about this entire thing because every single time that she's having to answer questions about this particular um, bill that she's proposed, she's the one that brought it to a vote. There's a minion that keeps telling her things in her ear, an assistant, as it were. Let the chips fall where they may. Get ready, here she comes. Old girl's gonna be in her ear just in a second. Get ready. This is such an, an emergency. If this is not what this bill ever intended, why not let the court settle this? They're going to be clarifying the intent based on, they're, they're going to be looking to us to see what we do as well. 
I don't know who that other lady is. She's smart, apparently. Um, as far as the representative Gable or Gabel or whatever her name is, um, do your homework. Maybe study. Maybe read a little. Um, I would suggest, uh, you know, working a little harder to get to know the information, especially if it's a bill that you're going to produce. Um, you seem to be inadequate to be the spokesperson for this bill. There's obviously a reason why people are chosen to be the front runners of certain bills by the governor. I think the governor pretty much selected you for a reason. I think we all can tell why the governor chose you to present this bill. <laughs> so you're trying to influence the court's decision? We are trying to clarify the intent of this, of this act. No, you're trying to pass a bill to influence the decision of the judicial branch. And now, because of this, because of the court challenges and the interpretation of this bill by so many people in this state, you want to change or impose your side's interpretation, 60 of you tonight, or however many, to change the interpretation of what this bill is and circumvent the court. But I wanted to clarify, uh, clarify a couple things you stated. I think you stated that the medical community is clear on these issues, is that correct? earlier on mitigations yes pretty clear okay uh, what does the CDC recommend on masking ages two and up right yes okay what does the World Health Organization recommend on masking I'm assuming the same no they're not it's 12 and up uh, other countries if you've had COVID you get one shot in our country, if you're 12, you get two shots. Other countries for kids, they're doing one shot. The medical community is anything but clear on this issue. Let me ask you another question. As opposed to getting a vaccine and not getting the full immunity for it that might affect them for the rest of their life. How do you feel on that? I'm not a doctor. You're right, and we're voting on this bill. I'm gonna go to the bill. The medical community is anything but clear on this. This isn't about this bill. There were 50,000 witness slips filed because we haven't done our job for 20 months debating all these nuances. I talked about it in a press conference last week. My wife teaches a kindergartner that's forced to wear a mask that has autism and it is not in the best interest for that child in that situation to be wearing that. But we have refused for nearly two years to do our jobs. Things aren't black and white. People back home are hanging on to this bill. They're hanging on to this act because we're not acting. They can't come to us. You guys have to say the same thing. Well, you know, it's the governor's executive order. We're not debating it. That's what this is about. The people that are upset at school board meetings, the people that file the witness slips, the people that are, that are going into places that I wouldn't go would be less upset if their legislators, the people whose office they could go into and talk to, were actually having very clear debates on these nuanced situations, but we want to do a one-size-fits-all, and this is the last hope they have. Let's not take that last hope that these people have, and let's vote no on this bill. Thank you. Yeah, the serious side of this is, it's no question. There's just no question. This is not about safety. This is about uh, the Democrats, as it were, and again, I'm not Democrat or Republican, the Democratic Party, that's the majority. It's about them using their uh, control to manipulate, um, to circumvent the process, to appease the governor's mandates um, that currently have no real legal authority. That's why they're changing this law. Because up to this point, the mandates have no legal authority. Even though the unions like IEA and IFT, their attorneys will say, no, the mandates are legal. They, they actually aren't. Mandates are not legal. Now, if they change this law, that provides some legal clarity for them. That's why they're doing it. As Representative Goebel said, or Gabel, again, I don't, I don't really care to pronounce her name correctly. They're closing a loophole. Those are her words, not mine. Interesting. Think about that for a second. This is an end run around the judicial branch 
We shouldn't be doing it. This isn't going to help things. It's not going to make anyone any safer. And all it's going to do is make people dig in their heels and be more resistant to taking this vaccine. And I urge a no vote. All right, I'm new to the game, the political game that is. I'm not Democrat or Republican. Um, I'm sort of a common sense type voter. Um, I just witnessed a team of Democrats, because they were, vote to clarify, quote unquote, the uh, Health Care Act that um, the person who brought to the uh, to the House of Representatives for a vote said it was a, they were closing a loophole. Um, and she also mentioned earlier in the um, debate that it was about safety, saving people here in Illinois. A virus that's got a survival rate of 99.97%. Anyway, I'm not very good with math. But regardless, tonight's vote, they had 64 votes to get... Um, and was more than 60, so they were able to pass it in the House of Representatives here in the state of Illinois, which uh, was an amendment to the Health Care Act, basically taking away the individual right uh, of each person in Illinois to make a decision on a vaccine for their health care. They're able to mandate that you, in some cases, have to take the vaccine or be tested for now. <laughs> In some professions, you have to take the vaccine or lose your job. Lose your job. Lose your job it's for the, the, the health of, of people. We're, we're going to mandate this and you have to do it. You don't have a choice. Not five minutes later, I'm still watching and a representative comes on and she's now talking about House Bill 370. The contradiction is unbelievable. But then House Bill 370 comes along. Listen to the first part of what she says. 70, also known as the Youth Health and Safety Act, does three important things. First, it reaffirms Illinois' commitment to the fundamental principle that every person has the right to make their own reproductive health care decisions without interference. What did I just hear? Terms Illinois' commitment to the fundamental principle that every person has the right to make their own reproductive health care decisions without interference. Yeah, I realize that she's talking about reproductive health. But the concept is... Mm, yeah, I'm, I'm having a hard time with that. What's that saying? My body, my choice. My body, my choice, right? Without interference. House Bill 370, my body, my choice. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Three emergency responders in some cities like Chicago, Los Angeles, right here in Baltimore are refusing to comply with the city vaccine mandates. I'm wondering where you stand on that. Should police officers, emergency responders be mandated to get vaccines? And if not, should they be stay at home or let go? Yes and yes. The two things that concern me. One are those who just try to make this a political issue. Freedom. I have the freedom to kill you. I mean, come on. Freedom. A president who unifies people. Quote, I have the freedom to kill you with my COVID, unquote. A unifying president. Some would say we have that.